There's nothing better than someone coming out of the dressing room with jeans and being like, I love the happy dance. Actually, the happy dance is probably my favorite thing in the whole world. I'm known as the Denim Whisperer. Well, our friend Nikki came into the Lunenberg shop uh, a couple weeks after we opened. She has a very tiny waist, but she's got a bum and some hips, as people do. She mostly wore dresses and Lulus, but you know, really wanted a pair of jeans. I believe she hadn't fit in a pair of jeans since she was 15. I got her in a pair of jeans. She came out of the dressing room, fanning her face, ugly crying, going, oh my God, Alex, you're a denim whisperer. To which Margaret, my wife and partner said, I've been calling him that for weeks. And then it just kind of stuck. So what are you looking for? Like when Nikki walked in, how did you know what jeans were going to fit her? I just generally have a knowledge of what eras of denim do what for which bodies, you know, and there's certain people that like contemporary denim right now just does not work for them because they don't think about people with those bodies for the jeans they make now because they're making jeans for the average body and body averaging is terrible and I hate that we do it. So uh, I knew that she needed a pair of balloon jeans from the late 80s, early 90s and I had the exact pair and they just worked wonderfully. She was very happy and the name stuck and here we are six years later still putting butts in jeans. What if you have no bum but you want to look like you have a bum and a pair of jeans? You know what I mean? Well that's what 501s are for. Okay. Margaret refers to my GWG uh, Cowboy Kings, my Wrangler Cowboy Cuts, and my 501s as my equivalent of a push-up bra. Magically, but from, from nothing, arises a bump. I grew up blue collar, was surrounded by denim my entire life. Just always really had something, some affinity for it. And since its inception, there's, that denim's never gone out of style. It's the one piece of clothing, I think, that is truly timeless. I was a creative director, a photographer, graphic designer, and I also think that my particular neurodiversity also allows me to see things in three dimensions. Uh, a lot of people with the particular neurodiversity that I have uh, tend to see things in 3D rather than 2D. So between having spatial awareness, a knowledge of denim, and that third Spidey sense, we'll say. I think that's what gives me the ability to do it. I didn't even realize I was doing it until someone, until Nikki. Often that someone comes in, I say, what's your blue sky? You know, what are you looking for? And I kind of see what I'm working with, do a quick little check of the memory bank of what we have in stock. And I grab the jeans, I give them to them. They go in the dressing room. Sometimes there's silence. I'm always nervous when there's silence. It has really good or really bad. Sometimes we get manical laughing, giggling, shrieking. Um, we've had a lot of Snoopy dances. That old trope of uh, look good, feel good. I hate that. It's terrible. It's not true. It's actually the opposite because we project how we feel. So if you put someone in a piece of clothing that makes them feel like a million bucks, they're going to project that they're a million bucks.